Every now and then it's fun to paint a miniature just for the fun of it. So a totally blank canvas that you can paint in any colour scheme you want that's not attached to any collection or any army or anything like that. Just something that's going to be fun. And in fact, we often get asked a lot about hobby burnout and how to deal with it. This is a great way of doing that. It's a real palette cleanser to paint something that's totally unique and different to anything else you're working on and you'll find it gets you enthused and then go back to your army afterwards. Now this is exactly what I've got right here. This is a Scorchbringer and it was sent to us by our friends at Mini Wargaming. This is a model from their upcoming Ravage Star line. Now full disclosure here, this is a 3D print and we were sent it with no obligations or anything, didn't have to do anything with it, but I really like it and I really want to paint it and because it's that blank canvas it's a really nice opportunity just to use some different colours and things that are going to be a little bit unusual for my normal style. So what I'm looking at here is something that I know I want to use some bright colours on, but what we've got to do is just first of all study it and just think what sort of things come to mind when looking at this miniature. And for me when I look at this I start to think of a cyberpunk gang leader. So I want to paint it in the cyberpunk style. So great for those bright colours I want to use. What I need to do though is first of all just get a little bit of inspiration, a bit of reference. So I'm going to grab the laptop, go on the internet and we'll get some images to take a look at. Okay, so looking at our reference, the consistent theme seems to be that what we get is a handful of very powerful, vibrant colours on the model, contrasted quite sharply with things like black and white. Now, in this case, I think black's going to be really good, probably for the undersuit of the miniature. And then what I want to do is pick a very vibrant, very bright colour. I'm going to go for pink here for the hair, because I never really use pink, so I think hot pink's going to be really fun for this. And then what we need is something that's going to complement that nicely. So in this case, a green I think will be really good. I think a jade green, in fact, so that could be the body armour, and then all the fabrics around that will look really nice if they're like a burgundy or some sort of colour like that, nice maroon, that kind of thing. So we've got our initial colours planned, so now it's time to get some paint on the miniature. So let's go over to the painting desk and get started. So what I need to do is start out by laying in those main colours, which means an undercoat colour that's going to work well for all of them. In this case it's going to be a grey, so I've got some standard grey from the Colour Forge from my undercoat here. And what I like to do typically is start out with the main colour of the miniature. In this case it's going to be green for that armour because the armour covers quite a lot of it. So what I'm going to do is have a bit of fun with this. I'm going to use some of the colours from Wave 2 of Two Thin Coats. And I'm going to start out with a jade green, which is funnily enough called jade green. That's exactly what I'm going to use in this case. And what I want to do is neatly base coat it onto the armour to begin with because normally what I'd do is be quite rough with the first colour if but that's really if it's an established colour schema I know what other bits are going to be what other colours as we go along in this case I'm going to be sort of working it out as we go along so as to make it not all confusing I want to be quite neat and just keep it to the armour plates so for that reason I'm using my size one brush here from Artisopus and I'm looking for all the plating so for example over the shoulders just here it's just a matter of going to be neatly base coating it on these parts for the time being just taking my time working my way around the miniature All right, I've got that green blocked in now. And so what I want to do is carry on applying those base coats on there just to get a lay of the land really. And so what I'm going to do is use a burgundy, which is what I've decided to go for for the fabrics. So for this, I'm going to use some sword hilt burgundy. This is going to be for the fabric that's around the waist just here. And also we've got a little bit on the shoulders. Now with that done, it's time to move on to the one I'm really excited about, which is going to be the pink for the hair. So it's hot pink is what I'm going to use here. Again, I just want to block this in as neatly as possible just to see how things are laying out. Now it's time to introduce more of that contrast I talked about earlier. So what I've got is an off black, I've got some Death Reaper here. This is going to be for the undersuit really, so I'm just going to work it into all the nooks and crannies between those armour plates. Now finally at this stage what I want to do is make the face really stand out. I want it to be a real focal point of the miniature, so an off-white will be great for this skull. I'm going to use some Ivory Tusk here, and again I just want to neatly block this in at this stage. And with those base coats applied, the majority of the miniature has now been blocked in and I'm pretty happy with it at this stage. I think that green's going to need to be a little bit brighter so I can layer that up later on to make sure it is standing out a bit more. But I'm happy with all the colours are working together. So now what I need to do is just pick out a few smaller areas. And I'm mainly looking at the weapons here. Now something that kept popping up in all the reference images I was looking at earlier is that the weapons in Cyberpunk were often very different colours from anything else. So I'm going to do that here. What I'm going to go for is some yellow and this is going to be for the main casing on the gun that she's got. I'm going to use some Skulker yellow here so nice and bright and then with that done I can move on to a silver and here I'm going to use some surcoat silver to pick out various details around the miniature. 
And there we are, I've finished applying all the base coats and I'm happy with where they're laid out at this stage. Again, I think that green's gonna to need to be a little bit brighter as we go forward, but now I wanna put some shading on there. And this is going to be on just about everything. I'm going to avoid those burgundy robes because for these I wanna do a bit of blending instead, but everything else can use a wash. And I'm gonna pick out three colors for this. I'm gonna start out with a black wash and here I'm using some Oblivion black wash. And this is for the majority of things. So the green armor, that white mask, also the silver and the black parts as well. And then I'm gonna move on to that pink hair and to keep the vibrancy of the color, I'm gonna use a red wash. I've got some Hellion red wash here. This is again a new paint. This is to make sure it still stays nice and strong in that color that we've got on there. And then there's the yellow. And for this, I'm gonna use one of Citadel's contrast paints. I've got some ironed in yellow. This is again to keep the vibrancy of the color on this feature. Now you can see how this behaves just a little bit differently to the wash, but what it's doing is giving a real nice vibrancy to it and a real nice warmth as well. With that, we've now got shading on the majority of the miniature, and we don't know that fabric yet, of course, because we are gonna do some blending on that later, but everything else has got some shading on there, and typically of washers, whilst we've got that definition, it has in some areas made things a little bit murky, so what I'm gonna do now is clean things up with some layering, starting out with that green armor, and now I can address it being a little bit darker than what I wanted here. So what I'm gonna do is first of all, return to some jade green and just layer this on. So using a fine brush, I'm looking for the flatter parts and just being careful to avoid the recesses and just reapply the color to those areas, just to you know, really bring that color back to them. Now, once this is done, what I can do is then push it a little bit into a lighter color. So what I'm gonna do is introduce some ghoul green, mix it into the jade green to make a slightly lighter color and then start layering with this too. But now I'm just looking to focus more on areas that are gonna catch the light. So more towards the top of the shoulders and things, areas where the light source is gonna come down on top of the miniature. I finished that layering and now that green's much more like I wanted it to be, you see. So a little bit lighter and we've also got some highlights building up there too. And so now what I wanna do is just make sure those other main colors we got on there, the lighter ones, are also nice and clean. So I'm gonna go back to that yellow first of all and just layer this very lightly on the gun, make it nice and bright. And this is gonna be followed up by that mask. Here it's back to that ivory tusk. So going back to that near white color. And then of course we've got the hair. Now for this, I definitely wanna make sure this is layered so it's nice and bright once again, because I want this color to really pop out once the model's finished. I've re-established those colors now and I'm really happy with how it's looking. So I'm gonna move on to the next thing, which is going to be that burgundy fabric. And remember, I kept this separate, didn't use any wash because of the shape of it. It's very open, smooth and flowing. So I think using some blending is gonna work much better here for doing that shading and also the highlighting too. And to do this, what I like to do is lean on the mid-tone color and add the darker one in there for the shadows and the lighter one for the highlights. So what I've got here are three colors. I've got some sword hilt burgundy for my mid-tone and then for the shadow, what I've got is some royal cloak. And then for the highlight, I've got some glistening gums. Now, the way I like to do this is to apply the mid-tone close to where the blending is going to be. So in this case, starting out with that sword hilt burgundy and then for the shadow, put that royal cloak into the recess and then pull it up into the mid-tone. So we get that blend there. And for the highlight, it's the same sort of thing in reverse though, looking for the raised up areas. So some glistening gums and pulling that down into the burgundy. Now that's done, I've got those smooth gradients there in the fabric and I think it could do with one extra final highlight on there, but that's absolutely fine because now I'm gonna go into those highlights. Now going back to the original plan, remember we wanted the colors to be really strong and quite bright. So I'm really gonna go for that when we're doing the highlights. Starting out with the green then, I'm gonna be using ghoul green again to begin with, but I'm gonna mix in some white into it to make it really popping, make it really stand out, almost neon in a way. So I'm using some white star for this. And it's just an edge highlight and all that green armor. Then with that done, for the yellow on the gun, we can use one of the brights from Wave 2. This is some Craven yellow here. And then for that hair, I want a really bright pink. So Neo Pink is the one I'm going for, the brightest one we've got to make it really pop out once again. Now with those areas done, we can move on to all the remaining colors in the miniature. And here, once again, I'm just looking for a brighter shade compared to what they are now. So a gray for the black, for example. I finished highlighting all those colors now and I also painted in the eyes with the glowing blue and I've just added a little black marking on the end of the gun there because back with the reference images, often on the weapons, they had these markings and things in black and alternate colors from the main color of the weapon. I thought it looked quite cool to have something like that on here as well. So with all that done, all I've got to do now is paint the base. And for this, she appears to be standing on some rocks. So I thought I'd paint them in a dark gray, but also she seems to be stepping into something that's sort of rippling. So I thought it'd be quite cool if this was some sort of green toxic goo. That'll feel quite cyberpunky. So I'm gonna paint that nice and bright and well with those done the miniature is complete
And there we go, the model is complete. Now, I really enjoyed painting this figure. It's been really fun to do something totally different and use some unusual colors that are normally out of my range of what I tend to go for. And remember, if you ever get hobby burnout or anything like that, this is a great way to really freshen things up by just pinking a miniature that you really like, just painting it in different colors and things. And it's always a good idea to get some reference to help you out with that, to give you a good starting point. But remember with this one, I specifically picked a color I don't normally use, so that pink, and really set everything based around that, just to see how it would take me. And it's been a really fun experience going through it. So I hope you enjoyed that and we'll see you again very soon.